Today's video is about the curious case of Miss Emma Sulkovitz. Now, let me give you a quick background to Emma Sulkovitz and why I'm making this video about her. Sulkovitz, like yours truly, is a university student and she went to Columbia University. You know, a really good one too. And in the summer of 2012, she happened to meet a fellow student by the name of Paul Nungesser. The two would have sex with each other, and like a lot of these stories that I am telling, the woman regrets the encounter and then claims she was raped. Now, I don't know why people do this. I'm not really interested in the reasons why they do it. I'm more interested in people's responses and the fact that these people will use said attention to literally destroy the men involved. Now, of course, Emma reported him to the university authorities and an investigation was launched. Nungesser was found to have done nothing wrong. Let me say that again. He did nothing wrong to Sulkovitz. He did not rape her. Now, in a sane and rational world, the story should have ended there. Fate of black, freeze frame, roll the credits, it's over. No. Instead, Sulkovitz was not finished with Nungesser. Oh no. Instead, she decided she was going to literally ruin his life and to make sure that he was forever remembered as a rapist. Even if he was never a rapist to begin with. So what did Sulkovitz decide to do in order to shame this man? To exact this sort of crazy revenge on him for doing nothing but having sex with her, consensually, that she later regretted. By doing some sort of performance art type thing in order to raise awareness on raping college campuses. This performance was basically carrying a mattress around with her every day, a sort of metaphor on the burden that rape survivors have. This went viral, ensuring her attention on her story and the audience to throw Nungesser to the wolves. I think in order to show you what she did, here, just watch it and you'll see. Rape can happen anywhere. Um, for me, I was raped in my own dorm bed. Um, and since then, that space has become fraught for me. Um, and I feel like I've carried the weight of what happened there with me everywhere um, since then. My name is Emma Salkwitz. I'm a senior in the college. Um, I'm a visual arts major. And I, for my senior thesis, I will be doing a piece called Mattress Performance, or Carry That Weight, um, where I will be carrying this dorm room mattress with me everywhere I go for as long as I attend the same school as my rapist. Um, and the piece could potentially take a day or it could go on until I graduate. A mattress is the perfect size for me to just be able to carry it enough that I can continue with my day, but also heavy enough that I have to continually struggle with it. I think the other thing about beds is that they're, we keep them in our bedroom, which is like our intimate space, our private space where we can retreat if we don't want to deal with anyone at that moment, but um, I think the past year or so of my life has been really marked by become, like tell, telling people what happened in that most intimate private space and bringing it out into the light. So I think the act of like carrying something that is normally found in our bedroom out into the light is supposed to mirror the way I've talked to the media and talked to different news channels, etc. For the most part, I'll be explaining how the piece works by word of mouth. Um, but then, I think the rules of engagement, if people are interested, can they can look at it and get a fuller explanation of how the piece works. Um, I will be using my studio in Watson Hall for my senior thesis as a part of the piece, um, where I will be writing the rules of engagement on the wall. So there, people can, I'll be doing parts of the performance in that studio space so people can come see those parts of the performance and also read the rules of engagement if they're interested. To me, it's an endurance performance art piece. Um, I do think that nowadays art pieces can include whatever the artist desires um, and in this performance art piece it utilizes elements of protest. Um, because I think that is relevant to my life right now um, and definitely the way I've been thinking about and dealing with various issues. Honestly, I'm not as nervous about carrying a mattress around as I am with the attention that it's gotten. Like, um, last night when I was shaking in bed and just thinking about how scary today was going to be, I was just 
mostly thinking about how um, I'm not really going to have anonymity anymore, which is a really strange thing to think about. One of the rules of the piece is that I'm not allowed to ask for help when carrying a mattress, but others are allowed to give me help if they come up and offer it. Um, so I'm hoping that not only do I get better at carrying the mattress, but that um, other people will learn about the piece and I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not hoping that everyone comes and helps, but um, I think I'm very interested in seeing where this piece goes and what sort of life it takes on. This, of course, was incredibly popular with our friends over at Social Justice and Feminism. She was raised on a pedestal and seen as a great sister and fighter for the cause. I mean, sure, the man was innocent, but that is just a minor detail that we can brush aside. Just because he was found to be innocent doesn't mean he was. She became so popular that she was even invited by US Senator Kirsten Gillibrand to a State of the Union, among other high-profile media appearances. Bear in mind, this all happened after the fucking investigation cleared none guess her of all wrongdoing. What kind of terrible timing is this? But you know, I'm just a sexist male shitlord. What could I possibly know what it's like to be a rape survivor? How dare I criticise Emma Sulkovitz? I should be ashamed and check my privilege. Like Emma Sulkovitz knows what it's like to be a rape survivor. Now, it's this social justice war and feminist reaction to Sulkovitz that I'm probably going to criticise the most. Although, believe me, I will be getting to Sulkovitz later on. Don't worry about it. Now, you have these people, these social justice warriors and the feminists, they always like to parrot this notion that people who have been raped, and by people it is always women, it's never men because that is not convenient enough for their agenda, have to be believed. Every word is sacrosanct, and to even suggest that maybe the person's story may not be entirely true is blasphemy. It means you're a misogynist shitlord and you need to check your often white male cisgendered privilege. You have to listen and believe, shithead. Nothing apart from maybe the EVA scandal presents a more harrowing example of the listen and believe mantra than Emma Sulkovitz and her carry that weight bullshit. I mean, it's a perfect example of the hive mind mentality, the fact that these people so blindly fell into this woman's trap. All she wanted was a straight A in her liberal arts degree and to fuck over Paul Nungesser. She succeeded. His reputation has been dragged to the dirt and it probably will never recover. It's not easy to shake the reputation of being a rapist, even if you didn't do it. The accusation is just as destroying as the conviction. The use of a witch hunt against Nungesser and the forming of these social justice feminist hate mobs is one of the disgusting aspects in this story. The fact that so many people are willing to harass and attempt to destroy this man is just incredible, and they allow the sociopathy liar the freedom to do her damage. You know what's even worse about this? It wasn't just the Tumblr Easters and Twitter keyboard warriors that Sulkovitz could muster to destroy Paul Nungesser. The mainstream media, proper journalists, were also compliant in this, giving the, this liar the platform to do so. I'm talking about outlets like Jezebel, The Washington Post, The Times, etc. She got a hell of a lot of traction, because contrary to what social justice warriors and feminists will have you believe, rape is taken very, very seriously by society. But if you think their initial reaction before the lies were uncovered, and Sulkovitz was exposed were bad, after all of what happened, it was even worse. But I'll get to that in a minute. So back to the matter at hand. I'm not one of those people who thinks the entire left-wing media is out to get me, because I'm a man who is not a feminist. I do not think that the reaction was fake, at least by the vast majority of people. You see, I could totally understand why you'd want to believe a woman was raped by a vile, ugly human being. I mean, it's a horrible crime. The social justice warriors and the feminists, both normal plebs and journalists, were duped. They were simply duped. I partly blame the fact that their ideology has indoctrinated them into believing, listen and believe wholesale, and that women are infallible. I mean, I do genuinely think that it all came from a good place, and that they truly wanted to end rape on campus, but they've only made things worse. I also think that it's a societal thing, that we as human beings are possibly programmed into believing women are more ease easily, because as a species, we need them to survive and not be raped. It's normal for society to feel more empathetic towards women than men, especially when it comes to rape. I do, however, acknowledge that feminism and the social justice ideologies have made this worse. So anyway, let's move on and discuss their stupidity when everything else was exposed. So Paul Nungesser, the alleged rapist, 
had initially decided to lay low and keep quiet. But whether it was through youthful naivete or just inexperience, he thought the media would eventually find the truth of the matter. You know, that he's not actually a rapist and Emma Sulkovitz is a sociopathic liar. This is the media. The truth doesn't come into it. Not when there's a story, a narrative to peddle and to keep it up. Like I said, the fact that he was found innocent was simply a minor convenience. It's not relevant to these people. The only relevant thing that is is that he was accused of a rape by a woman, a woman who was doing a performance art gimmick to raise awareness of campus rape. It must be true, because you know due process is not applicable to men when rape is concerned. It's not innocent until proven guilty, you are guilty. No, the media created a shitstorm. <laughs> of course, we suck if it's manipulating it and pandering to everyone who would listen. So he did what every man would do in this situation, defend himself. Now, as those of you who know of Max Semkin, the creator of Cars Against Humanity, a man cannot defend himself against rape allegations because, you know, that's sexist, you shit lord. Just ask Patricia Hernandez. She'll tell you more about that. So, Nungesa went to the press, and specifically the Daily Beast, and provided us with emails and social media interactions between him and Sulkovitz. It was irrefutable proof that Sulkovitz was lying and that he was innocent. Why? Because some of the messages were sent after the alleged rape had taken place, and they don't paint Sulkovitz in a particularly good light. Let's take a look, shall we? These messages all took place two days after the alleged rape had taken place. LOL YUS! Also, I feel we need to have some real time when we can talk about life and things. Because we still haven't really had a Paul Emma chill sesh since summer. This was, of course, Emma Sulkovitz saying this. Hmm, this is not what I'd expect a rape victim to be doing. Talking to the very man who'd raped her, I'm sure it's nothing. These ones were several months afterwards. Something isn't quite right here, but I'll give the benefit of the doubt. Whatever, I want to see yo 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 yo. Respond. I'll get the message on my phone. Well, I'm stumped. This is really hard to fathom. I mean, who would want to see the person who violated you? Well, it's pretty damning proof of a rape not occurring. And don't worry, it gets even better than this. Mungesser has sued Columbia University for their treatment of him, and the transcripts of this case was released to the public. The quote that follows will become the stuff of legend if it hasn't already, and it pretty much confirmed the rape didn't happen, as well as finally solidifying Sulkovitz's transformation from women's rights star to lolcat extraordinaire. Fuck me in the butt. You just couldn't make it up. Of course, Sulkovitz was going to send the Daily Beast an email to provide context to these messages. She never did. Because we know the context already, Sulkovitz. We know. Now, some officers from Columbia University's Allies for Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention, being the good feminist bots that they were, posted fuck me in the butt pictures on Twitter. These people included Anna Ho, Stephanie Schreiber, Melissa Shabotta, Zoe Lang pictured, and Marcy Zimmerman. I don't know about you, but showing solidarity with a proven liar and fraud is counterproductive to your goal of raising awareness of sexual assault. Just saying. These pictures only serve to be useful blackmailing tools for crazed scumbags on the internet, not a show of feminist and female solidarity. Hate to break it to you, my ladies. Now, do you remember when I said the social justice feminist response to the backlash that Sulkovitz received was just as bad as their reaction to hearing about her story? Well, let's talk about it, because believe me, it is golden. It is possibly worse than the initial response. So, imagine you are a feminist slash social justice warrior, and you had just found out that Emma Sulkovitz had been lying about being raped. What would you do? Well, rather than admit that you were wrong and condemn this person for what she had done, because you know, that's normal. No, what you do is you try to rationalise this terrible behaviour because the ideology can't be contradicted. It cannot be wrong. So they take away the agency of Sulkovitz, something they have done with every victim of sexual assault, abuse, rape, etc., regardless of if they were or not. Emma was just unaware, or just incapable of knowing she was raped. I mean, what kind of 18 to 24 year old woman could possibly realise she was raped? And thus spoke the SJW hive mind of Twitter, creating the hashtag, there is no perfect victim, to cover their misguided support of Emma Sulkovitz. Because you're a victim even if you spread lies, libel and slander about an innocent man because you were butthurt about fucking him because patriarchy. I mean, just look at these Twitter messages. You can look them up on the internet, I highly recommend it, because the amount of mental gymnastics it must have took to excuse suck of its behaviour is just astounding. 
Here's one. Well, here we go. I stayed in relationships, friendships with rapists at point because sometimes that seemed easier than speaking out. Hashtag, there is no perfect victim. Well, good for you. But when you imply you were raped several times because you use the plural, contacting the police may seem like a good idea rather than posting it all over Twitter. Just saying, love. How about this one? There is no such thing as a perfect human being. There's no perfect way to respond to rape. Hashtag, there is no perfect victim. Well, truly philosophical. You really have it down intellectually, but I have a perfect way of responding to rape. Call the police. This is a good ear right here. Remember how marital rape is illegal in every state? Previous intimacy is irrelevant. She posts some link to a website. Hashtag, there is no perfect victim. Well, I don't know how a friends with benefits is suddenly marriage, but what I do know is that previous intimacy just invalidated the fact that she was coerced into sex. Now, you can't fault the absolute zeal this girl has for listen and believe. Truly inspiring. Whether you screamed or froze in shock, it was a stranger or your best friend. I believe you and it's not your fault. Hashtag, there is no perfect victim. You go, sister. And finally, this little gem. Right here by a white knight. Everyone copes differently. Prescribing how victims should behave is hindering the healing process. Hashtag, there is no perfect victim. Well, well done, Sir Galahad. Because removing them of agency and being condescending is not. I could give you loads more examples of this. Believe me, there are thousands. Just go and find them yourself. It's just amazing the level of stupidity that infests the social justice ranks. I mean, I struggled to get through the stupidity just to bring you these examples. I'm feeling triggered right now. But it's just a classic example of how feminists and social justice warriors treat women like shit. They aren't adults. They aren't people who can think for themselves and can understand the concepts that apparently they cannot do. Because really, they're just frightened children screaming for help. So everything that a woman says is 100% true. A woman's feelings is much more valuable and valid than factual evidence, even in a court of law. It's like, feminists don't understand the tale of the boy who cried wolf. They are so desperate to gain the upper hand in sex when it comes to male-related affairs that they are willing to prop up and support liars and frauds who are using rape allegations for their own personal gain. They have done it continuously. There are too many examples, both in the past and especially recently, and it's becoming a dangerous precedent. If it's not already one in the first place, they think that any transgression that is afflicted upon them is comparable to physical violence. Men have to be accountable and have disproportionately punished because someone's feels happen to have been hurt. It's why they use stories like Silkovitz and UVA case, the tearjerker type of story, or more brutal, because none of what they can say holds up in a proper court. And it sucks. It really sucks, because now true rape victims will be branded as liars because no one will believe them. They will see them as Emma Silkovitz clones. The feminists will then come in and defend them, taking their agency away, and these poor real victims of sexual assault will fall into a spiral of victimhood and be patronised by SJWs, telling them that they are incapable of healing their wounds, unable to move on with their lives. It's sickening. Now, we're getting towards the end of this curious case of Emma Silkovitz, but there are two more minor events that took place that are interesting and need to be discussed. So, I'll start with the graduation ceremony that took place this year. In an event truly worthy of the lulls, she carried that mattress up to the platform to receive her degree, only to be snubbed by the president. And I quote from the cut, As Miss Silkovitz and her friends ascended the stage, Mr Bollinger, who had been shaking the students' hands, turned his back and leaned down as though to pick something up from his seat. Miss Silkovitz leaned over the mattress, trying to catch his eye, then straightened up and kept walking, shrugging with her free hand. And Emma later said, I even tried to smile at him, or look him in the eye, and when he completely turned away, she said later, so that was surprising because I thought he was supposed to shake all of our hands. Well, it's what happens when you are outed to be a liar. Now, Nungesa was also at that event, and it's no wonder he is suing the university. I don't think I want... I went into detail about his court case, but I hope he does, because they failed to protect him, just like UVA to protect Phi Kappa Psi. It doesn't help the university's case that they actively supported this stunt. I mean, is it any wonder that Silkovitz has used this as a senior year project? I'll give the Columbia president credit for the snub. At least he has some balls. Now, the second minor incident is most interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. It all started with 
posters propping up near the university with Slukovitz on it calling her a pretty liar. A pretty little liar, I should say. A Twitter account called Fake Rape took responsibility and has consistently posted their activity on Twitter with pictures. It's quite interesting, as well as pictures of futile attempts of white knights and social justice warriors trying to move their posters. They tend to appear in very difficult spots. But when asked why they did this, they responded in the best way possible. Just like how Sulkovic said in response to accusations she was lying and harassing people, as we know she did, Fake Rape said it was performance art. Brilliant. But regardless of what the Twitter account is or does, it represents a backlash against these extreme social justice warriors and feminist people. It is an example of pissed off men and women who are tired of these people being our souls to everyone and everything. They don't like that real victims are being mistreated and suffering from these fake assholes who just want the attention or money, for example. They don't like that innocent men and, and hell, men in general are being let down by the system and having their lives ruined by accusations of rape, all condoned by this third wave feminism we currently see. It's an interesting turn of events. So, that's the end of the video, and where do we go from here? Well, for Nungesser, he has to move on with his life, and I hope he wins the compensation he deserves. Job prospects are looking bleak for the lad, it seems, and this is what happens when you're accused of rape, either falsely or truthfully. For Sulkovitz, well, hopefully this will be the last we will hear from her, and assigned to the history books, I imagine. But what really worries me about this story is that it is basically saying to all the drama queens and batshit crazy bitches of the world that feminism will condone your lies. You can totally ruin a man's life easily because there's a mob willing to do the work for you, just waiting on the edge of their keyboards. Justice for people like Nungesser always comes too little, too late, because the damage is already done. It is too fast to stop. But when I see things like fake rape, as lacking in subtlety as it does, I can't help but think that maybe we will see the light of the day in these dark, dark times. This has been Charming Man 93 Like and share the video, and subscribe to my channel. I will see you later.